The image of the green sometimes is middle class, sandal wearing, muesli eating, bohemian hippies. Shoes. I know, you know sandals, shoes. lovely shoes. Like. Um, do you think you've moved on from that sort of image? It's a disappointing summary coming from you, Owen, because I'm you know perfectly <laughs> well that that is not... I'm here to ask provocative image. questions so you can answer them, that's okay. the point. The answer to your provocative question is that it is extremely out of date. I'm really proud that some of the places where we're getting some of our strongest election results are actually some of the poorest areas of the country. Green policies speak to working class people as much as middle class people. What is it to be a green philosophically, if you like? I think I'd sum it up by talking about the, the, the pillars of green politics, which to me are around peace, around democracy, around sustainability and around social justice. Are you a socialist? Definitely. Is the Green Party socialist though? I think the Green Party, most people in the Green Party would now define itself as, as, as socialist. The reluctance that some Greens have to use that word is that it can be a divisive word in the sense that people have many different definitions by, of what they mean by it. Personally, I, I think it's a useful word because it positions the Greens somewhere on that political spectrum where mm -hmm. people kind of want to know where we stand and to be able to give them an indication that we are a, a mm -hmm. party of social justice, that we are a party that absolutely would want to see public ownership, common ownership. Mm -hmm. Those signals, I think, are helpfully used by that word. You did much better in this election than you did in 2010. You got about 1.2 million votes across the country. But do you think it's fair to say that you'd have done a lot better for however you know, a nicer person, great an activist Natalie Bennett is, she's just not up to being leader? It's impossible to speculate, isn't it? What I do know about Natalie's leadership is that under her leadership, mm -hmm. party membership has gone from about 14,000 just over a year ago to 65,000 now. It, you can imagine a, a sort of a, a superwoman or a superman who can do everything, and maybe those people exist. Right now, what I think she has done is to go and engage so many new members. Mm -hmm. So many people have met her and, and, and have felt inspired by what she said. Why is UKIP doing better amongst working class voters than the Greens? They've had an awful lot more money yeah. in which to be able to get their message out and that's, that's not over, or rather that's not underestimate the, uh, the, the difference that makes. Um, they've had a very charismatic leader, don't agree with what he says, but he says it very well. There's been a bit of an obsession in the media with UKIP and, and, and in particular with Nigel Farage and, and, and I think a lot of people have voted for UKIP in the sense that they just want to give the system a kicking. They're feeling mm. that, that the traditional political parties aren't listening to them. Is Labour finished? I don't think Labour is finished. Labour's done a lot of brilliant things. But right now what I think Labour's got to do is to recognise that it doesn't have a monopoly on wisdom. Mm. I would love Labour to embrace a far less tribal politics. Ed Miliband, why did he fail so badly? I think he didn't come over as a person with the courage of his convictions. So I think partly it was a personal thing, not so much the geekiness, but just the sense that you didn't get the sense that this was a man burning with 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 particular beliefs and because right from the start he never challenged the austerity narrative it was never possible for Labour it seemed to challenge that that trope that, that, that Osborne used again and again when he said don't give the car keys back to the people that crashed the car in the first place mm -hmm. that was such a powerful image in people's minds and Labour never challenged it you know I was on question time many times doing their the job person, for them doing their job for them <laughs> think you know feeling like come on you should be saying this. One of the criticisms sometimes levelled at, at the Greens, which is literally reaction in terms of wanting to go to a pre-industrial era. I can't remember who wrote about this. It might have been Brendan O'Neill. James Dellingpole. Or James Dellingpole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, how would you respond to that? You want to reverse the industrial revolution effect? I would look at them with a weary exasperation, <laughs> as I am looking at you now, and say, you know, come on, look at our policies. You know, we understand as well that it's certainly not very compelling to give the impression that Green politics is about shivering around a candle in a cave. The current focus on turbo consumerism, which is mm. kind of what you're getting from, from the other parties, as a kind of aspiration, that's what we're all aspiring to, actually leaves a lot of people cold. That people want to feel secure, they want strong communities, they want meaningful work, they want clean air to breathe. Those are the things that we need to be focusing on. Um, but that absolutely means going forward, mm. not going back. It's quite a difficult time on the left. What hope is there? for people who want a different world given where we are at the moment in 2015 and how dominant the hysteric forces of austerity and neoliberalism are? Well, I take hope from the fact that 76% of people in this country did not vote for this government. I don't think they do Some have Some of them voted for UKIP, though. 
Okay, but even, even so, I think that if we'd had a fairer voting system, we could have engaged more people who didn't vote at all. Because I do believe in the better nature of most people in this country. I don't believe the majority of people in this country want to see policies that are absolutely immiserating their fellow citizens. In order to unlock some of that, firstly, we've got to be much bolder with the policies we're putting forward, and I, I count Labour and the Greens in, in, in doing that. There's a bigger programme too of, 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 of political reform, you know, the centralisation that goes on in, in this place, in, in Parliament, um, getting 16-year-olds to vote, you know, doing something about the House of Lords in terms of opening that up. I mean, there's all kinds of, of constitutional things that need to happen. But the first thing that's going to unlock all of that is making sure that people know their vote counts. It's nearly 100 years since women got the vote. That's a wonderful thing to celebrate. But let's make sure that everyone's vote is not just a vote that they have to cast, but that it actually means something. Okay, well, that's great. Well, thank you, Caroline, very much. That's great. Thank you so much.